1,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. So um, I've got to 1,000 subscribers and I thought I would just make a video to say thank you very much for subscribing. Um, personally, it takes me a little bit of effort to actually decide that I'm going to subscribe to someone. So the idea that, you know, 1,000 people have actually thought I'm going to subscribe to this channel, it means a hell of a lot to me. And what I thought I'd do today is actually maybe talk a little bit about why I'm doing this channel and really what my situation is and what I'm trying to achieve out of it. Because to be fair, it might not be really a, a video you wanna watch. And I thought about should I actually make this video because it might come across as a little bit narcissistic. Um, but you know, the more I wanted to talk about why I wanted to do the channel, about where I am and what I'm trying to achieve, the more it made sense to talk a bit more about the backstory behind it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a go and I'm gonna see if you think it's worth knowing about. I mean, you know, if you're gonna to subscribe to the channel, perhaps you wanna know, you know, what I'm doing, living in this house and having this plot and what I'm doing here. So I'm Paolo, I'm originally from West London and I now live in the Chiltern Hills, which is about 30 miles out of London. I am half Greek Cypriot, something I'm very, very proud of and I'm half English and my English side of the family, my grandfather Harry, um, really inspired me to start growing food and gardening generally on the weekends when he'd come up from East London where he lived. And he really was one of my first main influences when it came to gardening. One of the second influences was my Greek Cypriot family. And when we would go to um, a family town, village, um, in the northwest of Cyprus, they have like self, they are basically self sufficient farmers. And some of my earliest memories, I'm so, so thankful I got to see them self sufficient practices and um, things like keeping pigeons, keeping rabbits, real sort of homestead type self sufficiency setups um, in them parts of Cyprus, which probably hadn't changed really from the 50s and before. So I was really, really happy to have that. And I think these two influences in my life really, really. It just gave me the foundation but you know I personally believe some things in life are in your blood and I think you know that love of gardening and love of nature can be carried through the generations it's certainly true and um, with my granddad Harry he was in the British Army and he was a kind of guy that would just put a backpack on and disappear into the woods um, and funnily enough I do the same sort of thing today really and um, that's another thing I like to do get out into nature um, and just immerse myself in nature, basically. When my grandfather Harry got back from fighting in Europe after the Second World War, you know, London was in bits, especially East London, you know, it was bombed to, to bits and everyone was sort of living in very, very basic housing. And what he did was he got a job as a grain truck driver and he would take grain from the farms and um, into town. And what he would do is he would subsidise his income, shall we say, with grain. And he started on these plots in London, these basically an urban farm. And he was um, effectively an urban farmer and he would farm rabbits and chickens and he would sell them um, to the wealthier people in London on the weekends. And that's really how he subsidized his family, fed his family basically. And you know, it's really funny when my grandfather used to tell me about him as a young man after the war working in the docks, you know, London was a poor place. You know, the kids there would, you know, pick up an orange that washed up from the Thames. And um, it wasn't that long ago, you know. And, um, you know, these people were like sort of urban peasants, really. You know, real poor East End, East End people. And, you know, you fast forward to today and you look how a lot of us live in my generation. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're millionaires compared to them, you know. So Harry was always had this thing about self-sufficiency and was always trying to teach me, you know, not to waste things and to produce, always try and secure your food supply. And that's coming from somebody that, you know, actually lived in a time when there wasn't really much food around. One of them first defining moments in my life is when we were in the little village in Cyprus and Theodosio picked the lemon from the tree, which was above the dinner tables and just squeezed it on his food. And I just, it really, really resonated with me. There's something about it. It just made me realize, you know, why when I go home back to the UK, why is everything so complicated? 
you know, why are we all stressed out in the school and the classroom and getting told off for not doing homework? And really all you need to do is look to nature for what you need. You know, you don't have to, you know, we, I personally think humans have completely overcomplicated everything. And, you know, when I saw them self-sufficient communities, a lot of people would say in the West, oh, look at them poor farmers. However, you know, they had really, really strong social structures. Everybody took care of each other. They always had food. Um, and in the UK, we have to sort of like, you know, in the Western world, we have to work hard to get these tokens to put a roof over our head and to feed ourselves. And I just find the whole thing completely balmy. And if you look at current situations in the world, like climate change and ecological destruction on a mass level, which is actually going to come and bite us in the backside, uh, you could argue it's already biting us in the backside. That has really laid the foundation for really what I'm trying to do in this video. And when I was a young man, I was working in a lot of construction sites, doing landscaping. I've always been interested in gardens and I was building a lot of gardens. I was um, a bricklayer improver when I was younger as well. And I always had this dream that one day all I wanted out of life was just to live on a little house, probably on a hillside somewhere with a little plot and I could have my chickens and my ducks and just be as self-sufficient as possible. But you see, the problem was there was no way I was ever going to do that because there was no way I, I would need a lot of money. You know, I'd have to effectively, if you wanted to buy a big house, you know, in the UK, if you want to buy just a normal house now, it's almost like you, you have to go in debt half a million just to get it. So, you know, subsequent years, I, what happened was, is I got to sort of 12, 13, and my parents split up, my dad moved out, um, and my mum, me, and my sister moved into another house, and, um, Basically, my sister, it's very, very complicated this, but my sister had, my, my sister moved out. Um, she couldn't live there anymore. She didn't want to live there anymore. And then my, um, a guy came to live with me and my mum and um, I, I, hate, I hated it. I, I just couldn't live there anymore. I didn't, I mean, I was like 15 and I just would come home and there was all these people in my house I didn't know and I just felt like I didn't have a home and it didn't feel very good for me. So... I ended up renting a lot of rooms, um, spend as much time out of the house as po possible and 16, 17, 18 I was out of the house all the time and I was in a lot of trouble. I got involved with a lot of bad things in my life and um, I was a very angry young man and to be honest with you I look back and I don't blame myself for being a very angry young man to be honest with you but you know um, this is something which happens quite a lot um, today but I always had this dream, the one thing that sort of kept me going was one day I could just be a self-sufficient farmer and just the thought of that gave me so much joy and sort of kept me going and um, when I, I would work on a lot of landscaping sites um, and design and build sort of sites because that's what I was interested in and I met this amazing woman called Louise and she was a landscape architect and she said to me you should not be labouring and building you should be you are cleverer than this you could do a lot better than this you should go to uni and I'm like Louise you know I mean me seriously go to university it's like I was like one of the naughtiest kids in school you know it's not going to happen um but actually because of a lot of situations that were going on at the time it just made sense for me to get out of the area because it was getting a bit dangerous for me so what I decided to do was I said I'll do the work and try and get into uni and give it a go you know it meant I would move to South London for a few years and I thought that's good because you know it gets me out of this area so I went and lived in South London um because basically I passed all of the entry courses, they let me in, and I was 21, I started my university course and I absolutely loved it, and I thrived, you know. Um, it was really hard for me, but I got through my degree. Um, obviously took out my student loans, got a little bit in debt, um, and still had this dream that one day I would maybe live in a nice house on a homestead somewhere. So came out, 2008 recession hit, um, couldn't get a job anywhere as a landscape architect, tried, tried, tried and failed, and um, some people were like, working for free just to get experience. I couldn't do that. I couldn't live with anyone. So I was always supporting myself. I worked through my degree. Um, I worked on construction sites. I was actually at this point quite skilled bricklayer and I could get paid good money. So I worked through my degree and my masters. And at university, one of, the, one of my big projects was a sustainable housing development. Basically, I focused my whole degree around ecological landscape and e ecological landscape in design and sustainable housing developments. And I really tried in them projects to push the boundaries of you know making us less reliant on centralized 
nucleated densities and integrating food grown systems around where we live. And I still believe that this is the way that we should move forward. And, you know, that was one of the defining things about universities. It showed it took all of my interest of self-sufficiency and put it into the context of urban planning and how we can integrate nature into urban infrastructures and how it can actually help even social problems especially in high density environments so basically when I left uni I went into a construction firm um, I was doing design and I was basically building parks all around London but I still didn't want to do that I wanted to do eco landscaping and I wanted to I wanted to change the world I wanted to put nature into people's lives and that's what I really wanted to do so um I decided I was going to start a business and everybody in the company said you're crazy because it's really bad out there it's the worst recession for 100 years and just like university I took a massive gamble and I learned one thing about university um, it was blimmin hard for me but if you take these big gambles in life they always seem to pay off when you look back and I took the jump I went into business with a guy I used to work with because he was interested in the sort of things I was doing and he would bring us in a little bit of work to start us and to get us going um, we went into business and oh boy did we struggle we really struggled and nobody wanted to do eco landscaping nobody was really interested there was no demand for it and I thought well look I'm going to start this campaigning business and we're going to campaign and we're going to get into doing local parks and create an eco didn't happen I met all of these you know high ranking officials from the council I do presentations for them and um, these just bland looking people just had no passion or no interest really and they would just sort of shake their head and say yeah yeah it's really good but it will take really long time to implement all this sort of stuff so basically banged my head against wall for five years business partner one day decided do you know what I don't want to do this anywhere any, anymore it's not, not going anywhere and fair enough and um, I thought how am I going to do this how am I going to carry on this guy's bringing in all the business how am I going to carry on um, and I went through this real bad time it was a quite a bad depression actually to be honest with you because at the time I just thought this has just been a complete failure and I spent all this time and money getting my degree and what for you know I haven't gone anywhere all I've done is start this business and it hasn't gone anywhere but little did I know I hadn't failed it was just the next step in the journey and when my business partner left I decided that's it I'm gonna go and get a job so I started applying for jobs and I was in a quite a bad place at the time and my granddad had been gone for about seven years at this point. He passed away and he came to me in a dream and he said, all I remember was I was in the first house I was ever born in um, and I was in the kitchen and he was there. Remember what I used to play there and in the garden and he was just standing there and the sun was shining through the window and it was shining on him and he turned to me and he said, do not give up and he smiled. And he looked back out at the sun and I woke up the next day I said to my wife I said I don't want I don't want to go through this but I've I've got to keep going Claire because he's my Harry came and told me to keep going so I thought well I said I've got to give it a go um, the following week I'd won a £10,000 project down my road and um, which is pretty much impossible for that to happen um, and the phone just started ringing. I tried all this marketing, I'd built websites, I'd done all of this stuff, and the phone just kept ringing. And, you know, it was amazing. I just all of a sudden had all of this work. And I just, for the first time in my life, and I'm, I sort of was religious when I was younger, but I realised there is more to this world than just the physical. There's no way what I went through back then, um, there's no way what I went through and what happened was not intrinsically linked. You know, that was a defined message to keep going. And I'll tell you where I'm sitting today. Thank God I did, because I am on the... Things have just got so much better for me now. And year on year on year on year, things get stronger and stronger for me in my business. I'm in a situation now where I just I just turn work away. Even, you know, I, I, I just don't... I, I just pick what I want to do. That's basically the situation I'm in. Um, through hard work but at the time housing and housing still is a massive problem in the UK and I just thought you know I still have this dream of living on a house in the hill or on a hill somewhere and um, not didn't have to be on a hill but just with someone with a nice garden and it was just so far away I mean my wife studied medicine both from poor families and we got in a hell of a lot of debt going to uni because that's what we thought we had to do and everyone else who didn't go to uni sort of bought a house and 
house price had went through the roof. So they sort of, so, you know, everyone, so basically we felt we'd been cut down a little bit on that one, but we, you know, we weren't too worried about it, but I thought, you know, we're, we're living in these little flats, you know, and it, when are we ever going to be able to get somewhere, you know, or, or live somewhere, somewhere decent. And, um, our landlord at the time, we didn't have hot, hot water freight months. The guy was living in Pakistan and we'd basically taken them through, even a started a legal process because we had no hot water. I mean, we didn't really care the place was falling apart. We just wanted hot water and the guy didn't want to pay. And eventually we made him pay. So he decided, sod this, don't want to do it. I'm going to sell the house. So he sold the house and we were actually quite happy there. And I had my first little chickens. I sort of hid down the back and I turned the garden into sort of an allotment um, because it was just basically a mess before then. And um, basically we were looking at places and the prices, the rental prices were going up and I was still trying to get going my business and Claire was, you know, still a junior doctor and it was really, really tough for us. And then one day we got a phone, Claire phoned me up, she said, thanks, come along, you know, um, and I, you know, at this point I was really regretting going to uni. I was like, why did I get in all this debt? I got in all this debt, you know, to better myself. I struggled, I had to work through it. I really, really struggled on a level and it was hard for me as well because I was like never really a good performer at school. And I was like, why did I do this degree in landscape architecture? I'm not doing what I wanted to do. I've spent five years wasted time on this business um, that I was quite passionate about, but there was no demand for it. And, um, you know, dreams were just so far away and then Claire rung me up one day and she just said right we had to get out of this house I mean like, imminently like quickly and she said a house has come up it's on a hill it's like got agricultural land and it says you can only apply for it if you have a degree in a horticulture based subject um, an agricultural tie property when I knew nothing about this and um, out of like literally thousands of people that wanted to live in this property in the Chilterns um, only me and another guy qualified and we had to go and have interviews for the opportunity to live here and basically they gave it to me. So I now live on a hill in a little valley in the Chilterns um, with massive vegetable plots and even though me and my wife are just renting this property, um, we've now got to the point five years on when my business is doing absolutely amazing. She's a consultant, we've got a decent deposit. I, When I first moved here I thought it's impossible when in five years time they say they're going to sell this to us or sell it to someone if we've got the deposit and early on I thought there's no way we could ever afford to buy this but five years of hard work actually it's possible at this current moment it's possible but we're not worried because we've saved really well now my wife can work anywhere in the country I when I moved here um, panicked and thought I have to start another business so I started an online business which seems to be growing about 400% every year um, which is still small though don't I mean it's still very very small but the chances are, you know, if we have to get out of here, we could get something with some land. And I have a farm business idea that I want to implement. And there is a way in the UK you can get housing attached to that. So basically, the fact that we don't know how long we're going to be here, we've been here now for five years, we could be out next year, we think we've got another five years, the agent seems to say we've got another five years. I really just wanted to make a YouTube channel about basically everything I'm doing here and log it and I say Claire if one day we look back and you know we're not living here anymore we're living in this amazing place wouldn't it be cool if I have a video you know I use this as an opportunity to make a YouTube channel and record everything I'm doing here and growing vegetables and keep chickens I haven't even started making videos about the chickens um, that would be really cool and that's really what I did and um, you know I started doing videos and the business just went mad and I didn't have time but I really want to keep the videos going now because I really believe that some of the things I initially wanted to do with my business with the sustainable development and case studies and sort of peasant farming integrated into urbanization I really think that this YouTube channel could feed into it so I've I mean I'm going to be busy but I'm going to give it my best shot and see if I can integrate this into that so really there was so during some of them bad times I was going through when I was at uni, there was this one thing. I used to listen to Les Brown quite a lot. I got his greatest hits. He's a motivational speaker in America. And if you are having any form of bad time or need motivation, I would seriously recommend this gentleman. He's had some serious problems in his life and the, his philosophies of how he's overcome some of the challenges that he's had. Um, and, you know, I can tell you personally, when your head is so low, in the ground and you don't know what to do and you're confused as long as you keep fighting back you will get what is rightly yours and one thing he said 
in one of his lectures that I've never forgot is he said a quote from Einstein. And what he said was, Einstein says that the imagination is the preview of what's to come. And all my life I have imagined this and I've ended up here. So, you know, if I'm out of here next year, the journey will just continue. And really alongside the channel and doing self-sufficiency and trying to explore you know peasant farming and you know some of the social aspects of it and just growing vegetables and being as self-sufficient as possible i do believe there is a sort of motivational element to it because in the future i really think we're going to have huge problems you know we are absolutely destroying the planet and we're destroying a lot of the ecosystems and a lot of these things affect the weather and i think we're going to end up in a real terrible place and I, the, these people at the top who are supposed to be clever i don't know what i don't know who these i mean the green party in this country for instance is a disgrace they make themselves out to be green they don't know what green is they talk about oh business is going to solve the problem business is not going to solve the problem business is the problem you know business is the problem so holistically i guess what i'm trying to say is you know in the end we're going to have to become more self-sufficient there's a lot of social happiness which can be brought by simple living and producing local food there's a lot of health to be given from it gardening is fantastic exercise and you know when i look back to cyprus some of the old girls in them villages who would be in the farms working you know they would live way into their hundreds and i mean they would do physical hard work in them fields in blazing hot sun every day and, you know, I'm a lot of the elderly people now in the UK and my wife is an A&E doctor and she says, she says, this new generation coming through, we're seeing people in their 60s and 70s, which are, you know, technically 80 and 90 because they're just not physical enough. You know, we, we, our lives are just been sitting down, you know, that old war generation, they're quite a tough bunch. Um, my day to day life is very, very physical. And, you know, today what it is, we're just we're just eating too much rubbish and we are not physical enough and when I think back I think of my uncle Andrea I went to Cyprus and the guy's about 75 and I mean he comes swimming out the sea he just swam off into the distance I'm like do you realize uncle there's sharks out there he's like no there, there's no sharks there mate. I said trust me there's sharks out there and he says no and he just swim and he'd disappear off the horizon this guy's like 76 I couldn't I wouldn't I mean I'm a strong swimmer but I wouldn't swim off the horizon he'd just disappear and then he'd swim back um he'd run up the the mountain barefoot you know, and he'd be there with a body like Peter Andre, with his white hair. This is the way these people are. And I really think that that Mediterranean way of living really, really feeds into the whole idea of self-sufficiency, the physical robustness, the healthy food and um, healthy social structures. Because the way we live at the moment, I mean, you know, families don't even see each other. Everyone's so busy, you know, no one even interacts anymore. So I think that's one for the future. So... I don't know if this is even something really you wanted to listen to. I don't know if I'm being a bit narcissistic by just doing a video, just talking about me. But I just thought, you know, if just as a benchmark, I would do something different and just tell you a little bit about me, why I'm here and what I'm trying to do here. So really, um, I don't even know if this is a video anyone's going to watch to the end. I thought seeing it was the 1000 subscribers video, I would just try and do something a bit different and just explain who I am and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and add that little motivational element into it as well. You know, if you work hard and you go for a bit of crap and you get through it, um, you will be rewarded. No doubt about that. Um, so, so there you have it. Paolo the Urban Farmer, thank you so, so much for watching the videos. Um, and thank you for subscribing. A thousand subscribers. That's a thousand subscribe. That's, that's just, I just love it. Thank you so much. Seen it's a special occasion. Shout outs. Right now, there's been a few of you scrupulous individuals that seem to comment on my channel quite a lot. And looking back on some of them little videos that I did to start with, I just cannot believe you would even bother. But um, there's some very loyal people here and I um, am very appreciative, exceptionally appreciative, even more appreciative than I am for other people that have subscribed. Um, so first of all, Nancy Fahey, you always um, comment on the videos. I understand you're from Florida, um, which has considerably better weather for, than, than here, I'm sure. Um, so thank you very much for always commenting. Um, really nice to hear 
your take on everything I do. It sounds like you've got a good knowledge of what you're doing and I learned quite a bit from you as well. So thank you very much. Mandy0456, I think it is. Um, all I know is your thumbnail is a crazy looking lady that um, quite frankly scares the hell out of me. But um, thank you very much. You always comment on my videos. Um, I did watch a video, you have got one video on there and it was, I think it, I don't even know if it was you and your friend doing some camping video. So I, I don't even know if that was you, but um, I love camping, but thank you very much. Um, really enjoyed, uh, really enjoy your comments as well. Mr. Braznak, I, I don't know if I said that right. I, I don't know, I thought you were a fellow Greek. One thing you commented, um, I thought you were a, a Greek guy, um, but you said you lived in Germany. So I don't know, I don't know quite the situation there, but again, thank you very much. Um, I'm always happy to get comments from you. You seem to appreciate what I'm doing, so thank you very much. Um, crack yourself open a beer if you can. Jay's Permaculture and Allotment, thank you very much. Um, I love what you do and I love your comments and thank you for watching the channel. Thank you for always um, keeping the tabs on what I'm doing. It means a lot to me. Redbush Tea, I do like a cup of tea. I like many different types of tea as well. I've never tried a Redbush Tea, maybe I should try that. Um, thank you again for watching the videos and commenting, it um, means a lot, yeah? Um, Michelle Blackburn, um, apparently I inspired you to do something, I can't quite remember what that was, but um, really, really appreciate um, you tuning in as well. I don't really think I've missed anyone. Oh, of course, Elaine's allotment. Elaine, yes. Thank you very much. Another one from day one that's been commenting on the videos. I mean, I don't know why anyone would, especially, I don't even know if anyone would have got to the end of this video anyway. So I'm probably just talking to myself um, and getting drunk with myself. I'm not getting drunk actually, I'm just having a, a drink and it's a good separate beer. I'm not um, promoting the um, consumption of alcohol, but it is a special occasion and um, it's quite a nice separate beer actually. Mm, it is a Sunday and I've got to go to work tomorrow, so. Right, so that's Elaine's allotment. Tatiana, um, plant mama. Yeah, um, really like your videos. And I have to say, I really love your enthusiasm. You have got, a, um, you know, when there's a genuine enthusiasm, someone has a genuine love of something and it comes across in their excitability. I really love that because there was one thing that I was um, reading once and it said that Passion is God's will in you, and I really, really believe that is absolutely true. So, love what you're doing, love watching your videos, um, keep it up, and the rate that your channel is growing when you get to 100,000 um, subscribers. Don't forget old Paolo here, give me a mention. <laughs> That's a little bit cheeky. But um, thank you very much for tuning in, and thank you very much for commenting on the videos, Tatiana. Great to have you on board. Oh, and the icing on the cake, Last night I was on a little Facebook page I've got for the channel, which I don't really do very much, just post the videos there. And um, I was at 999 and I was pricing up quotations for work and I just had it on. I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I'm Saturday night, wouldn't it be nice if I got the 1,000 subscriber? And um, a guy that I've known on Facebook for quite a while, um, he's called Stephen Jones. Um, he lives in Bolton and he's very active in the permaculture community from what I see. He also has a channel called Urban Permaculture and I will link to it down there, all in block capitals. Um, and this guy, you know, when you're on Facebook friends with people, you know, from the same sort of interest, he's he's very passionate about what he does. And um, he messaged me and he says, Paolo, I am your 1000th subscriber. So I've actually known this guy on Facebook for quite a while. So thank you, Stephen, um, a real pleasure. Thank you, mate. And, um, you know, I'll leave a link to your, your YouTube. And I, I watched a couple of your videos and I like the way that you you incorporate some of the sort of political issues around, you know, permaculture as well. Because, you know, it's a movement and we have to try and educate these people that are supposed, that are supposed to be in charge, that don't really know what they're doing. Um, so thank you very much, Stephen. You were my 1,000th subscriber. So one day, hopefully, we will be able to meet up for a beer, okay? If I have forgotten you, I don't, I went through the videos, I went through the comments, but if I have forgotten you, I'm sorry, all right? Um, but just comment and tell me off and I will make sure you get a little mention. Um, it's all a bit of fun. To be honest, um, the way I've been working and this is like the only social thing pretty much I do now. So this is like my fun, basically. So I'll, I've got to go and edit now and give myself some more work to do, but I quite enjoy it. 
Okay, so the future. So what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit more about the stuff I was talking about with the um, development, sustainable development. That's further on in the future. I want to do a few little kitchen garden, cooking sort of things that I do from the the allotment itself, you know, the, the where I am and just the sort of, you know, the harvesting of it and actually cooking of something or a little Greek meze, a Greek salad. I want to do like a little few things like that. I actually want to try and do just a little Sunday with me and my wife, just having a little meze and a barbecue in the garden. Just feel just a bit of fun, really, because this is a bit of fun. And like I said to my wife, I said, you know, it's really nice to look back and well, maybe when we're older and, and see us doing stuff like this, you know, to actually, you know, I would pay everything I own to see my friends, my grandparents when they were younger messing about on a Sunday. So, um, uh, you know, I'd like to do a few little bits and bobs like that, but you know, I really want to try and keep up with some of the things that I'm learning all the time and still be, you know, try and be informative and try and improve my videos. I, I think they're getting better. Um, I, I think they, you know, some of the last couple, I think some of the best I've done, but we'll, we'll see how we go. I'm not going to ramble on all day because, well, I already have um, a couple more, sips of that and I probably won't be talk much sense anyway or I probably haven't talked much sense for the last hour or whatever it is um, anyway so there you have it Paolo the Urban Farmer 1000 subscribers thank you very much gonna be trying to do some more good informative stuff in the future thank you for coming along on my little journey um, I hope I didn't bore that absolutely bore you to death if you made it this long thank you very much Thank you very much for your subscription. It means a hell of a lot to me. Thank you. Get out there. Hmm.